most eras and quietly they're only missed when they've actually gone but sometimes an opportunity arises to see and to note the beginning of the end each year the hot valley motorcycle club hosts one of the five meetings in the marlboro motorcycle grand prix series riders and machines come to new zealand from all over the world to compete Something new has come with them this time. Only a few days before the meet, Yamaha, Kawasaki and Suzuki, the chief sponsors of motorcycle road racing, all announced their withdrawal from the sport. For these strange, gleaming machines, that announcement was the beginning of the end. sponsorship arose out of advertising. Ten years ago, Honda swept the board clean at races all over the world with specially developed versions of their ordinary four-stroke bikes. The publicity gained sold a lot of Hondas, but when they had a 50% share of the market, Honda withdrew. The field was left to Yamaha, Kawasaki and Suzuki, the two-stroke bike makers. As it turned out, two-stroke engines are almost perfect for road racing. The engineering is simpler, and two-stroke motorbikes develop as much power as six-cylinder cars with engines a quarter the size. We're also fairly keen that we, we don't speak to the media directly if anything does get does go wrong. If you get any reporters or something coming to you, we'll just refer them to the committee, and it's much an easier way of doing things anyway. You don't, you don't get into any, any sort of problems in at any stage. Inevitably, speed went up, and attendances, the paying public that is, soared. For them, the sight, sound and smell, but particularly the speed of the big machines, is irresistible. There will be 13 races in all today, but only two of them count as the Grand Prix. The others are the prelude. Like the practices, they're only a hint of what is to come. Then production, then sidecars, up to 250 again, over 250 again, then production, then mobile riders. If all of a sudden we get through and there's, um, there's plenty of time at the end before the first race, which is time for 11, we'll run another practice for sidecars. events are also an opportunity for the amateurs and the beginners to have a go.
For the prima donnas, the preliminary races are an opportunity to reflect and prepare. Greg Hansford, first rider for the Australian Kawasaki team. He leads in the series so far. He made his reputation on long Australian courses. What do you reckon this course is like compared to the ones in Australia? Well, I haven't ridden around it yet, but I uh, had a look at it last night. It's not much like them at all, really. Pat Hinnon from America is in the Suzuki corner. He too is not used to street racing. This is the only place where I've ever raced on the streets. And it's, it's quite unique. The turns are really sharp and then some of the tracks have long streets. Do you like it especially? Well, I enjoy it when you win. And you've been winning? Um, just the last race. Hinnon lies second in the series. But his last win puts the pressure on Hansford. Greg didn't have too much luck on such a really tight circuit. It took him too long to get used to it and he was um, unable to really get the full potential out of both him and his bike. Hansford and Heenan, superstars. But riders come from overseas to New Zealand races for many reasons. Frank Jewin from Canada, who brought his own Yamaha. Uh, well, it's winter time there. We've got lots of snow on the ground. Like last year, they only had three national races in the States. And you don't get to ride that much. This here you can ride, well, we're riding every weekend pretty well, sometimes twice a week. Would you like to come back and sit like Yeah, I would. I really enjoy the country here, except for the weather. <laughs> Although it's New Zealand summer, it's a bad day, alternating wet and dry track conditions. This poses tactical problems. What gears to use? What tires? People say there's no sort of thing about the tires are right. What does it feel like when they're not right? Does it just slow you down, actually, or what happens? You don't have traction. You don't have sideways. Traction. I see. <laughs> insistent that they receive attention and they're out there right on their bike. It always have been taken care of and this sort of thing. And uh, they're, they're far more concerned for their machinery than they are for their own personal safety. I'm quite certain about that sometimes. Well, why would that be, I wonder? Well, I think in the case of a lot of them, they've, they've laid out a, a very great deal of money uh, to buy these bikes. So the blood that's coming out is, is not as important as the oil? Not, no, no, that's, that's, that's for sure. No, there's no doubt about that at all. But, uh, you've got to be most insistent sometimes to make sure that they do receive proper treatment. <laughs> Riders accept crashes, but the spectators seem to like them. It's an important part of their enjoyment. What are you getting out of it at this stage? Do you, do you feel like you get your money's worth? Oh, yeah, we've seen a couple of pranks here. It's uh, one of the things most people come along to see, I reckon. I mean, nobody likes to see accidents, but when it happens, it's a big thrill. What sort of technique do you like? Oh, how, how do you mean? Something like Heenan's and Hanson's. Oh, you've got to have uh, wheelies and a few X and stuff. You know, that yeah. helps. <laughs> what, what makes it really worthwhile when you come to something like this? What makes it feel like you really had a good day? Oh, uh, watching a good watching close cornering in it. A good close race, yeah. yeah, with a couple of guys really hanging it out, yeah. <laughs> really getting carried away. The preparations are complete, the waiting almost over.
towards the end of the first lap, P for Patin and Leeds, he'll cross the starting line at over 240 kilometers per hour. But Greg Hansford, G, isn't far behind. With two riders of this class, neither can afford to make mistakes. Hansford wins the first of the day's two races, but he can't relax too much. In world-class road racing, each race is vital. I think it'd be a little bit easier this time. What, to win? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Why is that? Well, there's about half a dozen blacks who are going the same speed, so it could be any one of them. Just have to wait and see what happens. For Pat Heenan, who came second, a post-mortem and a tactical yeah, rethink. Everything's for the, the wet, changed the gearing at all, and as soon as it dried out, uh, my gearing was wrong, that's why he kept telling me it was on acceleration. What happened to that? So you're changing back to a dryer compound? Uh, we're setting up another set of wheels with a dryer, and then we're changing our gearing so that it will, it will work even if it is wet and then it dries out in the middle. That didn't do any damage to the bike, did it, going over the island like that? No, it just went over it. That's what the suspension's for. Something like that comes a little surprise? Um, well, I had the choice of either trying to make the turn the way I was going, or a uh, straight road, even though it's going over an island, I know I can do that. And um, second place is more important than not finishing at all. Murray Sale, Hansford's teammate, came third, and lies third in the series. He feels he could do better. Oh, I just wasn't in the group or something. Uh, I was sliding a fair bit. It's hard to tell the wet patches from the dry patches. So you don't know whether to blame the tyre or what. Greg's bike's running a six-speed gearbox. Uh, mine's only got a five. Ah. So every time you come to a first gear corner, Greg's bike's got a lower first gear and can accelerate a little bit better than mine. And on this track we got uh, three first gear corners, so that's, I guess, ten feet every first gear corner. Well, makes it a bit hard. For the internationals, planning and furious preparation for the second Grand Prix. One hopeful who challenged the big bikes with his little one. We had a chance against the uh, you know, higher powered machines because they can't really get the power on too well on the wet. But it dried up halfway through the race and they all went screaming fast, so that was it. If the riders and their machines are the prima donnas, then the mechanics and team managers are the orchestra, the pipers. But those who pay the pipers are backing out. Jim Doyle, Yamaha spokesman. Uh, I feel right now to take a rider and put him on the road racing circuit and make him very competitive, give him the machinery he needs, I, I think $20,000 US is, is my target figure. Is it too costly then? For the harsh reality is that after eight years of expenditure, Yamaha, Kawasaki and Suzuki have not been able to dent Honda's 50% share of the market. But that's not all. But we have to remember that the environmentalists uh, uh, they have their job too, you know, and they're gonna they're gonna finally take away the two-stroke from us, and we have no alternative but to go to a four-stroke engine. Uh, it'll take the speed away, I think, just temporarily. Though. I think that oh, give us two to three 
years, and I think that they'll be back in the, in the running again. And I think that we'll be able to get 200 miles an hour out of those also. Two-stroke engines, particularly highly developed ones like these, burn too much petrol and burn it inefficiently. In today's energy and pollution conscious society, a two-stroke engine, with its tarnished public image, becomes literally a museum piece. Yes, I, uh, I've heard that. Uh, it, uh, because it is, it's a very unique design internally, and uh, it was set up to race for the factory as a factory Suzuki, and Suzuki being out of the business now, uh, they do want to retire the ones that, that have done the finest job through the year. So I think they will do away, uh, put it in a museum. Suppose that somebody were to say that this might be the last of this kind of racing, that after the day there wasn't going to be any more. Well, what would your reaction to that be? Oh, I'd be depressed. Well, uh, it wouldn't disappoint me all that much, but it's, it's one way of being a pleasant day for me. I know you have to find something else to fill in your time again. I think it would do a lot of people harm and the respect, whereas, as I said before, it's a sport, and if they can't enjoy life with sport, a lot more worse things than do, they'll probably go to a party and drink booze. Well, it's got to keep going. It's a, it's a sport, and that's all there is to it. It's, sort of, it's something that's sort of here to stay. It's got to. second Grand Prix, the end of the day, and at least one of the bikes taking part in it is headed for a museum. Is this race series really one of the last of its kind? Heenan's win puts him level with Hansford. Naturally, he's pleased. So now we're tied. <laughs> now it's a two-race series. Dead even going into the last two races, and yeah, it should be easier than that. I don't, I don't like it. So Heenan looks forward to the rest of the series. What if we look further? I'll find something. <laughs> 
Energy and pollution have already forced the change from two-stroke to four-stroke. But is the two-stroke the dinosaur? Or is the sport itself a monster that will not be able to adapt to an energy-conscious world? 